My name is Hamza Abdullah and I'm making this vulnerability video because I almost lost my life last week. So in 2010, I was driving uh, on Indian Hill Boulevard in Pomona and I just had a rush of emotion and I didn't know where it came from. So I pulled off to the side and I was just crying hysterically. And something told me to Google therapist and I Googled therapist and there was a young sister, a uh, young African-American sister, she picked up the phone and soon as I, as soon as she answered and said hello, I just started crying. And she said, okay, okay, take your time, take your time, I'm here with you. You know, her, her letting me know that I was a person, hey, I'm here with you and it's okay. And she said, are you okay? I said, no. She said, what are you doing? I said, I'm in my car and I'm driving. She said, uh, can you pull over to the side? I said, yeah, I pulled over to the side. And she said, are you thinking of hurting yourself? And until that moment, I had never even, that thought had never crossed my mind. And I said, I don't know. For the first time in my life, I didn't know whether I wanted to live or die. That was in 2010. Now here I am uh, in August 2018, and two weeks ago, I tried to kill myself. I tried to kill myself, and for that reason, you know, I knew something wasn't right upstairs, and I needed to go get, go get help, go seek therapy. So I'm here in a treatment, process, in tre treatment program, and I aim to get better. I aim to understand myself as to why I would want to take my life. Who is Hamza Abdullah? Hamza Abdullah, um, I am a 34-year-old man. Uh, I'm married. I've been married for 12 years. I have four beautiful, beautiful children. Uh, I have the best wife in the world. She's been there for me through thick and thin. Uh, I'm one of 12 children from Pomona, California. I have a younger brother, Hussein Abdullah. We both went up to uh, Washington State University. Uh, before that, we graduated from Pomona High School. We were fortunate enough to play in the Pac-10 at that time, played for a Pac-10 championship in football. Uh, I was very fortunate, went to the NFL, played seven years in the NFL. And after the NFL, I started to wonder, okay, who, who, who is Hamza really? Because from the age of 12 to 28, I was Hamza Abdullah, the football player. And now being at this facility, they're asking me that exact question, who is Hamza Abdullah, the man? So what I'm understanding is Hamza Abdullah, the man is someone who, who loves people. I love people, I love to see people smile, but what about Hamza Abdullah, the individual? I love myself, and it starts with me. The loving of myself, the caring for myself, the understanding of myself, what makes me happy, and that's why I'm here in this facility, to truly learn and understand who Hamza Abdullah is. That's a deep question, you know. How has the healing uh, in my life gotten me to this point? It's been bits and pieces, bits and pieces, bits and pieces, and I'm starting to know and understand that my losses that I thought were in my life, they weren't losses, they were lessons. And today I had heard a great quote from Oprah. She said, forgiveness, and she, you know, we're talking about forgiveness. The first thing in treatment, they tell you to forgive yourself. So I've had to forgive myself. But today Oprah said, forgiveness is letting go of the hope that the past could have been different. And that hit me like a ton of bricks, you know, because a lot of that um, suicidal ideation is the guilt and the shame off of what you did or what you didn't do in your past. But now being a man of God, being a spiritual person, I know and understand that that was God's plan. This is God's plan. I'm here for a reason. You know, even if we have one view on this video, it may be the one view that saves a life. What scares me? You know, a few weeks ago, I would have said, uh, dying. I would have said dying and the not knowing of dying, uh, wondering if I was going to be forgiven because I, I am a spiritual man. I, I believe in God and I want God to take me in the best of ways in the best of places. And you know, last week when I attempted to take my life, I actually had a piece of glass that I was cutting my wrist with and it actually stopped cutting. So in that moment, I realized that it was not up to me. I was not in control. So what I fear now is not reaching the level that God placed me on, not reaching the potential, not, not, a, not accomplishing the task that God has sent me here to this earth for. And so God willing, um, I'll be able to do that. And if it's through this, if it's bringing awareness to uh, mental health, mental illness, the severity of this, then God willing, I'm going to do it. And I'm going to do it full force and, you know, follow me. My weakness is I tend to latch on to individuals who need help and do my best to build them up as if I'm building myself up. 
during my football career, I would always take on the younger person and I would mentor them. And seeing them succeed would make me feel good. But what happened in that was I wasn't filling my own container up. I just kept emptying and emptying and emptying. So my weakness has been the being taken advantage of. I, I've been gullible because I want everyone to succeed. So that's why I love this, this bit about uh, what is vulnerability. Because individuals, if you ask, you know, probably 9 out of 10 people, 8 out of 10 people, if you just get them to talk about being vulnerable and vulnerability, I'm pretty sure the, the term weak or weakness will come up in that conversation. But vulnerability is not weakness. Vulnerability is openness. Vulnerability is transparency. Vulnerability is removing that mask, removing that filter off your page and saying, hey, this is, this is who God made. This is who God made. I'm me. I'm perfectly imperfect. And that's who I am. What motivates me? Me. I, I motivate me. I would have said when I played football, my family would have motivated me. Um, getting a second contract would have motivated me. Uh, getting my name in the paper, getting a billboard would have motivated me. But no, when I wake up every morning, I say I am. And I start my uh, affirmations with I am. And then I end that uh, affirmation with I am me. I am him. He is me. Just to know and understand that without me, there's nothing. You know, when we leave this earth, that's it. That's it, you know. So I am the most important person in my story. I am the protagonist. And I'm the one that is in control of my attitude. So I am me. Most important to me is, I would have said, leaving a lasting legacy of wanting for your brother what you want for yourself, because that's what I grew up on, making sure that you're a selfless person. But right now, um, I would say my legacy of being me, being honest with myself, accepting myself just as I am not 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 thinking that I'm going to be judged by others and so I have to try to fit in or acquiesce no I am me and you either take me or you leave me healing has changed my relationship with others because you know hurt people hurt people and I was hurt I was deeply hurt even from from my football with physical pain emotional pain from transitioning from uh, a high profile uh, a high profile uh, sport, high profile profession, and then all the way down to my childhood. Growing up as a young African American uh, boy, growing up in the 80s of Los Angeles, uh, divorced parents, come going, seeing the gang violence of the 90s. You know, there's trauma. You know, not being able to wear a specific color. People don't understand that. I was not able to wear the color red. You know, I, I was able to wear blue jeans, but even still, somebody roll up on you, hey, where you from? That's trauma. So you know, being able to heal here has, has given me the ability to literally love and actually love and get to know my friends and my family on such a deeper level because I'm not hurt. Therefore, I'm not hurt, so I'm not thinking that everyone else is out to hurt me. Growth is mandatory. And so healing and growth is something that we need as communities. You know, here I am as a professional athlete, speaking on mindfulness, speaking on mental health. Where do we see that? Here I am as a black man, speaking on mindfulness, speaking on mental health. Where do we see that? Here I am as a Muslim man, speaking on mindfulness, speaking on mental health. Where do they do that at? Where do they do that at? Well, we need to start here. We need to start today. My name is Hamza Abdullah, and I'm here. I'm being mindful. I'm taking care of my mental health. Because with my, without my mental health, my physical health is, is gone. You know, I'm 6'3", 220 pounds, but I thought to kill myself last week. Why is that? But that's why I need to be in the present. I need to stop looking backwards. Stop looking at that back. Remove the mask. You know, here we are on a nice, bright, sunny day. I should probably have on sunglasses, but I wanted people to see my eyes. I want people to see my eyes. I want people to see my face and see the passion. See, the, see that understanding. This is real. Suicide is real. Depression is real. Chronic traumatic encephalopathy is real for people who've hit their head, people who've had concussions. These things are real. My name is Hamza Abdullah, speaking on mindfulness, speaking on mental health, speaking on vulnerability. I ask of you, the individual, take my lead. You know, our brothers here are doing something positive, and I'm asking of you to join in this. Join in this situation, man. This is a situation that we need to address. Our mental health, our own personal mental health. Look in the mirror, ask yourself, am I being mindful? Am I understanding? Am I taking care of myself? Am I forgiving? If the answer to any of those questions are no, then now's the time to start addressing it. So I appreciate y'all. Peace and blessings. Love.